Before showing you how to generate normalized spectra in FCS Express, I want to show you a useful tool on our website. In the Resources menu under Tools, find the SciTech Spectrum Viewer icon and click it. Then you can choose your configuration. Next, you can double click on the fluorescent tags you'd like to view, and the chart above will update to show you what we call the normalized spectrum signature for each of these dyes. I'm now showing GFP. Next, I'm going to search for YFP and add that fluorescent tag to my list, and now I can compare the two together. You may find there are some dyes you want to plot that aren't listed here. If you'd like to add them to the list, email us at sales at scitechbio.com and we'll do our best to get those up as quickly as possible. In the meantime, we're going to show you today how to generate this type of plot with your own data using FCS Express. First, locate your single stained control FCS files that you'd like to plot. In the list shown here, I have 10 different fluorescent proteins that I will use to create my normalized spectrum plot. Now, let's go open FCS Express. I am using version 7, and you also should make sure you're using version 7 or later, as some of the features we're going to show are only available in the version 7 release. When the Start menu appears, you can check this Update section to see what version you're running, then click New Layout. To import your data files, go to the Data tab at the top of the screen. In the new data list window that appears, I simply drag my FCS files from my folder into this data list, and they are loaded in FCS Express. To create your first plot, select the first file in your data list and drag it into the white layout space. Then click OK in this pop-up window to create a dot plot. To change the x-axis, right-click on it and choose Forward Scatter. Then change the y-axis to side scatter. Next, I'm going to create a gate on the plot by right-clicking on the plot. From the menu that appears, I will choose Create Gate, then choose Polygon Gate, and then I'm going to click around my population to draw the different edges of my polygon. To close the gate, connect your first dot and your last dot. Then give the gate a name. Here, I'll call it FSC SSC and click OK. Next, I'm going to select my gate and drag it onto the empty white space to create a new plot with events displayed from my FSC SSC gate. I want to make it a histogram, so I go to the Format tab, click Change Plot Type, and click Histogram. I'm going to resize the plot a bit, and I'm going to refer to this plot as our gating histogram throughout this video. Next, I want to create histograms for every channel in my data, so I click the Multi Plot tab. Then, click the Histogram button, and once they appear, I'm going to relocate them and use the little circles at the edge of the figure to drag the figure and make it bigger so it's easier to see what I'm looking at. To ungroup all of the histograms, I can right-click at the red border around the plot, select Grouping, then click Ungroup. Now all of the histograms become individual plots instead of a single plot. Since I'm only interested in all of the fluorescent channels when making my normalized spectrum plots, I'm going to go ahead and select and delete the non-fluorescent ones like time, side scatter height, side scatter area, and forward scatter as well. Now let's start going through the data. My first data file is eBFP. In looking at the histogram plots, it looks like I get the most signal out of channels V1 through V4, with likely V2 having the best separation. So let's look at the gating histogram. We can right-click and go through each of the plots, V1, V2, V3, V4, and V2 does look best, let's leave it there. Next, I'm going to right-click on the plot and create marker. I'm going to place this gate over my positive events. Then I will make one more gate in the same way, create marker, and put it over my negative population. Next, I need to right-click on the plot, select Convert Marker to Gate, choose Marker 1, select Convert and Link, and name it Positive MFI. Okay, 
And I'll do this one more time. Convert marker to gate, marker to convert and link. This one I will call negative MFI, and we'll need these linked gates for the batch analysis we will do shortly. Now that our template is complete, we are ready to start the batch analysis. Go to the Batch tab and click Batch Actions. We will set up two Excel sheet exports, one for positive and one for negative MFI, by clicking Export to Excel column mode. Then click in the box under Save to New File to choose where you want to save the exported file. I'm going to place this one on my desktop in a folder called Spreadsheet, and I'm going to call it Positive MFI and click Save. Then click OK. Now we need to define what will be saved in each column of the Excel file. I want the file name in my first column, so I'm going to click and drag any plot from my layout onto the Excel sheet in Batch Actions. I'm going to select Keyword Token, then click the dot dot to the right of this menu here, and find the FIL keyword with a dollar sign in front of it. Once you find it, select it, then click OK, and click OK again to close the windows. If you're working with FCS files from SpectraFlow version 2.1 or later, it's better to use the tube name keyword here rather than the FIL keyword, and you'll see why when we get to the Excel file analysis later on. Now I want to export MFI for each of the fluorescence channels into the Excel sheet, so I'm going to select all of the fluorescence channel histograms and drag them to my Excel sheet in the Batch Actions window. This time choose the statistics token, click OK. Under gate, I'm going to choose positive MFI, and under statistic, choose median, then click OK. Now I have 48 median statistic exports and one file name export in my Excel file. We need one more Excel sheet for our negative MFI, so let's click export to Excel column mode once again, set the path length, and give the file a name such as negative MFI. Then click save, then click OK. Now I have my two Excel spreadsheets. I need to define what is in my negative MFI spreadsheet. Repeat the same process as before, click any one plot and drag it into my second sheet, and click keyword token. Then click the dot dot icon and find that dollar sign FIL keyword, select it, click OK, and click OK. Then I need to select all of my fluorescence histogram plots once more. Again, click and drag onto that second Excel sheet. Click statistic token, then click OK. Under gate, choose negative MFI this time. And under statistic, again, choose median, click OK. And now my second Excel sheet is all ready to go. Now you can set aside the batch action window or close it. Still in the batch tab, click the options button. Then in the window that appears, check the box next to unconditionally pause between iterations. This will pause the batch analysis for each FCS file in our data list so we can review and adjust our gate placements. Then click OK to close the window. I'm going to move the data list window out of the way so I can see all of my plots. Click the Run button at the top of the screen to begin the batch analysis process. We made all of our gates using our first file, so that one is done. Now the batch analysis has moved and paused on the second file, the ECFP. For this die, it looks like the most signal is showing up around channels V3 through V5. So let's use our big gating histogram up here and toggle through each one and see which channel has the most signal. We'll go through V3, V4, and V5. And it looks like V4 has the most signal, so let's stay on V4 and adjust our gates on this plot. We need to adjust our positive M1 and also our negative M2. And if needed, you can adjust the forward scatter, side scatter plot as well, but this one still looks okay. So we're ready to go to the next file, we'll click continue in the run window. Now the EGFP data is displayed, we'll see where its maximum signal is, it seems to be around B1, B2, B3, so let's check those channels on our gating histogram. We can toggle through each one again and look for the max signal. And for this one, 
Seems like B2 looks best, so let's stay there and again adjust our gates as needed for our positive M1, our negative M2, and you can move the forward scatter, side scatter plot if necessary. If you get this pop-up, click the first option to keep your computer's processor happy. When you're happy with your gate placements, go ahead and click continue again in the run window to move to the next file. You need to continue this process of locating the maximum emission channel for each of your dies, adjust your positive negative gates, as well as your forward scatter side scatter gate if necessary, and keep going through each file until you've completed your batch run. When the run is complete, both Excel files will open automatically. To complete the next steps, you're going to need to download the normalized spectrum template for your cytometer configuration from the URL displayed below. I have one already saved on my desktop in my spreadsheet folder for my four laser Aurora. So I'm going to go ahead, locate that file and open that up to complete our next steps. Once the file opens, you can see there are four steps listed in the upper left. The first step is to copy and paste the positive MFI data into the yellow area of the spreadsheet. So let's go to our positive MFI exports and copy all of that data over. Then back to our template and I'll right click and paste into the yellow area of this template. Next we go to step two, which is to copy and paste over the negative MFI data from our exported batch analyze data. So I'll go over to that file, do the same thing, copy and paste the negative MFI data into the gray area of our analysis template. Next we go to step three, which is optional. It's to enter in the fluorochrome name for each of your files in the first column in the yellow area. And what this will do is it'll update the legend on the second tab here so that your die names are presented rather than these kind of long file names generated by the SpectraFlow software. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some time to type in all 10 of those names. So bear with me for a moment while I enter those in. Once that's done, I can go to the second tab and check out my normalized MFI plot on the left and my positive MFI plot on the right. Thanks for watching, and if you have questions, feel free to email us.